Hey, what's up, it's Michael. Welcome to the channel and avoid just one of the mistakes I'm about to show you and here's how much money you could have in your account over time, $12,000. In today's video, the nine cord cutting mistakes you want to avoid. Let's get started. Number one, being too loyal. When some people cut cable, they create a bundle of streaming services that works for them, but then they never take advantage of the flexibility that streaming provides and cable does not. This is the number one mistake that cord cutters make after canceling cable. I've talked about it before. For decades, cable and satellite services, they have kept people trapped because there was a lack of competition. And if you broke a contract, you probably remember paying an early termination fee. That is not how streaming works. Most services, they have no contracts or long-term commitments, so you can cancel whenever you want to. But just like most big companies, streaming providers do not typically reward their loyal customers with lower fees. So you can take advantage of that flexibility to cancel at any time and stop and start your subscriptions to save money. And number two, not buying a streaming device. If you have a smart TV from a major manufacturer like Samsung or LG, this is an LG right behind me, you will have some streaming apps pre-installed, but you get access to a lot more apps with a streaming media player. That's like a Roku or a one of its competitors. Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Chromecast with Google TV offer access to a wider selection of streaming apps and interfaces that are simple to navigate. Personally, I like Roku devices for first time streamers. For that reason, they're just so easy to use. But if you only use one or two streaming apps and they are available on your smart TV, you may be able to get by without a streaming media player for a while. Everyone else though, get a streaming device and use your TV's interface only as a backup. Number three, spending too much on equipment. So I just recommended that you get a streaming media player but that doesn't mean you've got to spend a fortune on one. Roku has several budget-friendly models for $25 to $50, Roku Express, Roku Express 4K+, and Roku Streaming Stick+. Plus. Amazon Fire TV Stick and TV Stick Lite are in the same price range, and then there is Chromecast with Google TV, 50 bucks. There are no subscription or activation fees with these devices, they're just a one-time cost. Now for about 50 bucks or less, you can get a streaming media player that supports fast streaming in HD and some voice control features. If you want to stock up, check around the holidays because sometimes they are half price. And that way you can get a new streaming device for all the TVs in your house. Number four, forgetting to exit your apps. And this is something a lot of you wish I would talk about more. I know some people have data caps on their high speed internet plans and others do not. So if you have a data cap and forget to exit out of your apps, they could continue to run and use data in the background for a few hours. So just like you turn off a light switch when you leave a room, remember to exit out of your streaming apps and turn off the TV when it is not in use. That way it is less likely you're gonna have to pay for going over a data limit. And number five, letting your internet bill creep up. All streaming services require a high speed internet connection. And if you pay for internet from a cable company or a big phone company, you've probably experienced at least one rate hike in the past. When I polled my YouTube community, about half of people said they pay $50 to $75 a month for internet service. So if you're paying more than that, it's time to do some comparison shopping. If you get internet service from the cable company, see if there is another option where you live. You can call up your existing provider and ask for the retention department Explain to them that you are shopping for a better deal on internet and present the offer from the competition. I've used this strategy year after year to keep my internet bill on the low end of that $50 to $75 a month price range. But there are some newer options too from wireless companies, T-Mobile and Verizon. They have expanded their affordable 5G home internet services to more and more cities in 2021 you will need to see if your area is qualified, so I'll put links down below for you to check that out. Number six, following the crowd. The best thing about all these services is that you can watch on your own terms. So if you aren't able to catch the show of the moment right away, just wait a little while until it's convenient for your lifestyle and your budget. To save money on streaming, you've got to plan your binge watching. 
Pick a maximum of two or three pay streaming services and make a list of the shows or movies you want to watch or add shows to your services watch list. And when you have run out of stuff to stream, cancel the service and try another one. My rule of thumb is that if I can't remember using a particular service to stream three things from the past month, I pause or cancel the subscription. I also created a free tool to help you get the most out of your subscriptions, the Michael Saves Streaming TV Spending Tracker. You'll find a link to that down below. Number seven, skipping what you get for free. You may be able to lower your monthly streaming bill by dropping a pay service in favor of one that is free or just free to you. For example, the big three cell phone providers offer free streaming TV perks with their most expensive unlimited plans. There is Prime Video along with an Amazon Prime membership. Xfinity customers get Peacock Premium. And there are free trials of live and on-demand streaming services. Some of those on-demand trials are up to 30 days. And there are some services that are just free to everyone all the time. Three examples are Pluto TV, the Roku channel, and my new favorite, NBC's Peacock, which does have a free tier and has been ramping up its content lately. Yes, you're gonna have to put up with ads, but typically about half the ads of broadcast TV. And while we're talking about broadcast TV, no need to pay for those channels if you've got an indoor antenna, one-time cost of about $40 or less. Moving on to number eight, ignoring the deals. I have mentioned deals a few times throughout this video. Here are the ones you absolutely do not want to miss out on. First, annual plan discounts. This can save you usually between 15 to 20% when you pay for a year of a service in advance. Just make sure it is a service that you are actually going to get use out of. Also, Black Friday sales. You will find great deals around the Black Friday holiday shopping season on both devices and services. Devices up to half off. Finally, extended free trials. These pop up a few times out of the year, sometimes week-long free trials for on-demand services will go all the way up to 30 days, and some live TV streaming services like YouTube TV could give you two weeks free instead of just one. And I'm staying on top of the deals for you. I post them on the community tab of my YouTube channel, another reason to subscribe to Michael Saves. And number nine, not putting your savings to good use. This is something I've wanted to share for a long time. A few months back, I compared the cost of cable TV and live TV streaming using a real cable bill. Streaming was $74 a month cheaper or $888 in a year. Your savings may vary, but let's go with that $888 a year figure. Do you know what you would do with all that money? If you're not sure, that's the mistake I'm talking about. If you are cutting the cord to save money, be intentional with your savings. Pay down debt, fund another budget category, or invest it. And you'd be surprised how that $74 a month or $888 a year adds up over time. Take a look. If you take that $74 monthly savings and invest it every month for 10 years, it'll grow to $12,414.57. And that is assuming a 7% annual rate of return. So cutting the cord can actually help fund your retirement. Put the savings to work in a 401k or a Roth IRA with a provider like Vanguard or Fidelity that doesn't charge really high fees. I'll drop a link below to that calculator I just showed on the screen. That way you can enter your own numbers and see how your cord cutting savings can grow over time when you invest it. And thanks for watching today's video. Give it a like if you got something out of it and I'll see you back here soon for more ways to save on streaming TV. Take care.